Hi, I'm Juan Caballero. I'm software engineer in the microinformatics team in, in the ABI. So today I want to talk a little about our experience running CW workflows using our local and cloud infrastructures. I will start explaining a little more about what we do at the ABI and the microwave informatics team. We have a service called Magnify that is mostly for doing metagenome assembly and annotation. So metagenomics, as you can imagine or you can you can know is the sequencing of multiple microorganisms that lives in different environments. And that reconstruction based on the sequencing data is a complex process, especially because we are talking about multiple organisms, we, that means they have a complex composition and the reconstruction is not so easy. That requires a lot of computational power, especially for memory and sometimes uh, CPU power or storage. This process obviously is no, is something that we cannot run on regular on regular computers. So for that, we have a full pipeline that we, we call it the Magnify Pipeline. This Magnify Pipeline in, in different steps can perform the analysis of those metagenomes, but also can do the de novo assembly. Uh, this pipeline includes a dozen of tools and databases from different for different tasks. And uh, you can see on the diagram is a complex process is because we have multiple steps that can be combined or produce, re produce results for other steps. All this process, obviously, we, we try to apply on different data sets. Uh, many of them are public data coming from researchers or including some projects we can we have a, uh, have analyzed it. So in this case, this full analysis can take several hours or even days to be completed. One of the first thing is uh, to try to explain why we choose CDL well. In principle, we like that it's an open uh, language, in this case to define our workflows. It's simple, it's, uh, it have the isolation part that we like it. In this case, we, we can, uh, Run process with so much problems. Uh, the input and output uh, can be explicitly in, incorporated in the pipelines, and really the modular part is also important for us. There is a lot of scalability or parallelism that we can apply on different subsets. In this case, for example, sometimes we have millions or even uh, mil thousand or millions of sequences to be analyzed. So, in this case, that enables us to try to parallelize this process. But the most important part and probably the main part of, the, of this talk is about the portability. We are aware that CWL is just a language and depending on the executor you are using, you can integrate on different infrastructures. So for us, it was really important because even when we have our local infrastructure, we sometimes we have access to other. Our local, in this case, to give you an idea, is a large cluster, obviously it's shared in all the teams and groups on, on ABI. We have multiple nodes, we have thousand of nodes. In this case, there are some, a few of them, they have large memory. We're talking about several terabytes on, on memory. And more important, this cluster is managed by the LSF queue management. So in this case, that's our in position on the infrastructure, we need to execute these workflows when each job using the LSFQ. Uh, to execute our workflows, we select TOIL. TOIL as another executor for CDL, have good components to run the LSF jobs. One particular pipeline I'm particularly having working is one that is, is specific for long read sequencing data. So that long reads have the peculiarity that in sometimes is really complex and could be more memory hungry than the other process. For this, I have the this this workflow defined on on CWL from the top front end, and in in this case, he also incorporating containers technologies to, to run the tools. For example, use Docker and Singularity in particular to run the tools uh, to execute the particular steps of the pipeline. There are different cases that we can turn on and off. In this case, the pipeline is kind of versatile and can, can be adapted depending on the inputs. And in many cases, the execution is with toil. 
In this case, we have used a bash script that is a wrapper to call all the dependencies and just turn, turn on the, the pipeline, starting with everything. And in many cases, also the configuration is also automatic because many of these data already have some metadata generated by the European Nucleotide Archive. So in this case, we can know some on beforehand what is the sample, what is the context on this and the complexity, etc. Many of these uh, considerations and also the para the pipeline parameters are also defined in JAMA files, so we can have some scripts that can turn on and off those. The problem with this pipeline is in regularly we have a large memory requirement for this. Uh, by default, we require 400 gigabytes, and of course, this can be increased. We saw some data that are really complex and large that we need to increase that to 800 or even 800 gigabytes on use on the memory. The uh, CPU is not so intensive. In this case, we are fine you're just using eight cores. So that's because many of these steps of the pipeline, so only a few parts can be multi-threaded. Um, we have tested to 32. 32 cores, but there are not so much benefits because in many steps of this is more important the memory than the CPU power. The other part that can be uh, complicated or required is the this space, in this case on the storage. By default, we are requiring around 200 gigabytes and could be exp expanded really quickly because during the assembly, the assemblers generate a lot of temporal files that can be uh, duplicate or even triplicate these values. So in this case, it's really easy to to start increasing the space on, on the disk. And uh, the other consideration in many cases, toil is not running one single step at a time, could be running multiple steps at the same time. So that thing also increase complexity on how to manage this. We reached a point where we have some problems that were hard to, to run on the on our cluster. As I mentioned, it's a shared infrastructure. So one of the big problems we have is the queue. Sometimes some jobs take several days or even weeks to be launched because the queue is too large and there are many processes to be run. Uh, that's also important because we, I mentioned the big memory nodes are really few. So in this case, there the are competitions who, who can run those analyses. And in many cases, the, there are some problems with, during the execution of this process. Sometimes we detect some hardware fails that just break the whole process and we need to start over. The other part is sometimes the, the, the debugging part in this case, because we're running toil with the LSF component. And in this case, toil is really verbose on many of these error explanations. It's hard to understand what happened on the on, on a specific errors when it's not the infrastructure, it's more the software that is failing. So it's, it's kind of complex to debug. In collaborations, we also have uh, some interaction with the Google Cloud Platform. So for that, in this case, we have a, we can request some access to particular infrastructure. In particular, we can request private infrastructures. In this case, isolate components on the Google Cloud. And in many cases, this is, is really triggered just starting up a master node, and then we can have dynamic nodes being launched as needed. Uh, the, in contrast, in this case, this type of cluster we can use. Uh, the job management is mostly controlled by Slurm. So in this case, that's a, a change on the way we control the process. And in this case, we, as a, again, we have a problem that we have some data set that are not easily to complete on the AV cluster. So in this case, we, we reach the, for people or Google Cloud consultants to, to get access to this GCP uh, infrastructure. And we try it in this case, we select uh, some a few data sets and we start doing some some basic in this case uh, testing what happened if we run everything on the, on the cloud the good part is activation it was really quick i mentioned this case because we are using a subset of the google cloud in this case really quick to activate in this case we have scripts that can request the requirements on the infrastructure as I mentioned this because mainly mostly to, to get the master node and then the dynamic nodes will be uh, created as needed. And the pipelines in this case itself, because we already have integrated that in the GitHub repos and installation is really quick to install. And the other part is, for example, the, the many of the tools we are using are containerized in Docker. So in this case, we can just pull, pull down the image that we need to execute. And that's what's also really quick. 
um, the, the benefit that we had on the CWS was the real portability. The full pipeline was no need to have any modification because Toil, in this case, just managing the, the type of the queue that you're using. There are no chains on the CD workflow. And mostly the, the only requirement we create is we just a simple bash script to launch the jobs, just to simplify our life and just have a single command to launch everything. With itself, the pipeline was not modified. So that means that we, in three, four hours, we have everything ready to start testing and do some, some assemblies. Of course, the assemblies don't take some takes more time than those four hours, but that was a really good kick up, quick installation and setup. Our conclusions after we run these examples, as well, in this case, definitely that the use of some private cluster on demand solve it or problem the long queues. In this case, we don't have to wait for more process to be launched and start running. That was really quick. Um, we also noticed some change on the hardware. In this case, we are not controlling what is the hardware on either both system, but in this case, there are some uh, hard disks are a little faster and on the cloud cloud. So that's a, a quick benefit. Uh, I mentioned the installation was quick, but the, there are no pipeline modification. All the serial code we have in, uh, created was was used as was right and in this case we don't have to edit anything and especially because we're using containers we also have no, no facing problems on the installations on the software especially for dependencies in this case everything is containerized so it's easy um just to give you an idea many of these assemblies will take uh, almost 12 hours to be run so in this case the the, the assembly part would be taking more time than I expected, but in this case, we we have a full speed up that is four times faster than we run on the lo or local process. Uh, the only problem, or in this case, the only part we need to do at the end is because this is a cloud environment. In many cases, the results or the files being produced, we need to move it back to our system. So in this case, was really also simple to set just to after every process was finished, used to copy back onto our storages, the data that was produced. In general, I must say in this case, the, the, the large benefit of the experience we have is really good. In this case, we we feel that CW complete or, or complex problems that is that run in a pipeline in different infrastructures, minimal change or adaptation we need to do and was quick and efficient to be run. I like to finish just to give, um, well, to, to say thanks and many people in this case or a micro informatics team is kind of large in this case you can see the names over there but in this case the in particular Martin Veracochea and David Juan were a lot of help on this project and of course I want to thank also all all people that works on different parts of the on, on collaborations and funding and that's mostly what I have okay. thank you